Michael is with SAP, and if I were to ask most of you, what does SAP do, I know what answer I'm going to get. But Michael works in a part of SAP that's much more creative, in part because you're a creative guy. As I recall, you studied music I did. I in used college. to sing and dance when I was, had hair and was good looking. And, oh, you're yeah. still good looking. <laughs> Yeah. And you, That's what my wife tells me. <laughs> <laughs> you went on to do other creative things like video games, scores and scores of major video games for ABC, and Disney, and people like Lots that. Lots of folks, yeah. yeah. And then we uh, uh, built a company doing 3D technology for manufacturers, where it's how I got into the manufacturing side. Boeing and most of the major aerospace companies use the technology that was purchased by SAP. So your portfolio at SAP then involves what? Um, so I'm the global co-lead for the Internet of Things initiatives, uh, which runs across all of our software categories. Um, SAP's uh, number one enterprise software company in the world, and we do everything from financial systems to CRM to manufacturing systems across the board at a software level. So IoT, we view Internet of Things as a new technology paradigm that will, in, in fact, impact all of these areas. Now, the interesting thing about uh, Internet of Things is this is one of those potentially blockbuster kinds of concepts. I mean, and we have all lived long enough, most of us, to have seen other big hyped themes not come to fruition. Yeah. But is it possible and is it likely that IoT is going to touch most consumers, most industries, most businesses at some point, and how exactly? Yeah, I, I, my personal view, and I think everybody in here probably has their own, is that IoT is akin to mobility. It's a technology change that's going to pervade everything we do. In five, ten years, we won't use the term. It'll just be how things are. Everything we assume is it's connected and it's smart and it's telling us things. It won't be a new concept. It'll just be how things are. So I don't think it's overhyped. I think it's maybe branded overly in that... Um, uh, I don't know if people are going to, today we don't go out and sell mobility software solutions. It's part of what people expect and how they, how they work generally. So I think it'll be the same kind of thing. Uh, definitionally, what's the difference between a, a thing in IoT and my smartphone or my tablet? Because that, that's the other thing that I think sometimes gets confused. People sort of throw yeah, everything around. I think this is a difficult thing. Uh, SAP uh, was founded in Germany where there's another term called Industry 4.0. Um, and so M to M, Industry 4.0, IoT, mobility, convergence, these are all terms that people use, uh, networks of networks. Uh, the way we view it internally is um, there's sort of the, as the thing's getting built, that is viewed as Industry 4.0, manufacturing things uh, in a much smarter way. And then when those things go out in the world and you're tracking them and you're running all the processes you run around them, that's when we kind of view it as the Internet of Things out in the world. So. You know, it certainly could overlay on your smartphone, but the real difference is, um, you know, as sensors get cheaper and cheaper, they will become like dust. They'll be on everything. The package of manufacturing products will alert the manufacturer when it's late itself. So that becomes part of how process is done. So those things will become everything, the carton of milk. That's why the potential impact is so big. It's yeah. basically attached to almost everything that a human being encounters in a normal day. It's fundamentally the digitization of the physical world at some level. Where uh, now it's not, you know, we're not having nanomites drive down into the soil. But if everything we work and interact with is smart and understands where it is and where it's supposed to be and all this kind of stuff, it'll have a huge impact on our productivity. I mean, enormous numbers on some of the biggest problems. Um, energy, smart lighting, they think can cut CO2 for the lighting part in half. Uh, agricultural technologies can improve yields by 60% so we can feed the planet with the growing population. Um, uh, Anti-avoidance, anti-collision, I mean one that I don't think we quite understand the impact. I, I sometimes get stunned. Smart uh, cars and autonomous vehicles will, you know, wipe five trillion dollars of cost out of our system because there's no need for insurance because cars don't wreck, there's all the medical problems that go away. It's a huge change. Productivity lawsuits. goes, lawsuits. <laughs> so these things, the world's going to be very different in 15 to 20 years. Now, so now I'm starting to understand why SAP cares about this. It, manufacturing, industrial processes, uh, inventory tracking. Yeah, just... so if you look at the, most of the things you th see in the Internet of Things are consumer-oriented. You know, you have the bands that, that 
test you know, your sweat and if you slept well and all those kinds of things. But SAP is an enterprise software company, and we think there's a huge, maybe equal, maybe bigger opportunity to optimize all the business processes that companies run. SAP also has uh, a huge investment in business networks. So um, our Ariba networks and purchasing networks, probably don't know, more commerce goes through them than all of the major Amazons, Alibabas, combined eBay. Um, so the commerce of the business world is running through SAP systems. And so if you think about how all of these devices and things will become connected and how, as you said, logistics and manufacturing become connected, and the business transactions themselves are flowing through these systems, the opportunity to really change and optimize how business process gets done is enormous. So that's what we're focused on. Mm -hmm. Our audience is, is, of course, composed of lots of different parts. It's an ecosystem, really. Yeah. Uh, but of course, they're sort of centered around communications, mobile, fixed, and then the, the, the global pipes that tie this all together. Internet of Things devices are going to be communicating probably using a number of protocols, and some of them are local area and don't necessarily represent direct incremental demand mm -hmm. for wide area communications, but probably some of them do. I'm thinking connected car. How are you well, going to connect the sensors? We're, we're, I think it's a huge opportunity. I think one of the most interesting things about the Internet of Things is the broad ecosystem required. So everyone who's in the communication industry has an opportunity. SAP, we focused on the applications and software layers. But if you look underneath that, you need device cloud connectivity for different types of devices, because there's a myriad of those in industries. Below that, you need connectivity globally. Um, if you're making a device or a machine, you need to know that it can be connected globally. If you're a manufacturer, uh, uh, so that all your operators, so all of those we view all of those devices are going to have connectivity and probably at some level through cellular. If you think of inside the manufacturing plant, maybe that's an intranet of things, and they'll be using you know, other local uh, wireless. Uh, but if you're a manufacturer and you're putting the product out to go global, you need to know that you will have some sort of connectivity globally. And I think um, if you look at the sheer numbers of the devices, by the end of the decade, it's assumed that you know, seven to eight billion people will be connected via phones and about 10 times that amount of machines. And if there's any data flowing at any reasonable amount in the machines because of time series are throwing off a lot of data, there's a tremendous opportunity for everybody. 80 billion devices is a lot of devices. That's a lot of devices. Yeah. And you can think of them as users. Think of them that way. If you think of them as first-class citizens on the next generation of internet connectivity, wow, that's a lot of users. You may not get as much revenue out of them as you would a human, but there's a lot of them. So one of the things I always think about, um, well, we're coming up on March, uh, which is the 15th anniversary of the dot-com and telecom bust, followed by about three years of what I like to call nuclear winter, so mm -hmm. I remember it very well. It's very personal. But it, it's hard to believe it's been 15 years. And uh, one of the things that I, since then, have always worried about is how healthy are the telecom industry's revenue streams, and there's a lot of change going on, and you know, uh, profit margins are dropping. Internet of Things, to me, is really strategic, not just tactical, because if you run out of people to sell cell phones to, you can sell them connections to tablets, and that's, that's helpful. Uh, but if you've got 10 times that number of devices that need to be connected, interrogating databases, that business opportunity dwarfs just about anything else I can think of if I'm a, a service provider, just in terms right. of retail accounts and revenue and value and that sort of thing. I don't see anything else bigger than that. No, and it's funny. I was talking to somebody, and I realized I was showing my age. I was talking about Y2K. I said, this is kind of a Y2K opportunity. And they looked at me blankly, and I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Um, you weren't born then, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You're 20. <laughs> Um, so the point was that anybody who was selling technologies before uh, the year 2000, that you know, all of the industries were going, what does this mean? Are our computer system going to stop? Are airplanes going to fall out of the sky? All those kind of funny things, none of which happened. Um, but this is one of those uh, moments when senior executives really care about this. Uh, the, I, I met with a guy who was at... Uh, uh, Bill Gates um, CEOs forum and he said they run two sessions all day long and this is just CEOs of major corporations 
And um, during the day, one of the sessions was an Internet of Things session. And of the 150 there, about 90 were in that session. So that gives you kind of a sense that it is on the radar at a very high level of everybody in the industry. And, and if you think about it, it's because if I'm running a business, I have to know how this is going to affect my business. If it's going to have major impact along uh, multiple areas of my business, I need to understand it. So for all of us in the communications and software industry, I think the thing to think about is what are the value-added applications and solutions that my particular business can add in the context of hyperconnectivity and Internet of Things. Um, what our object, I mean, my objective personally being here is to communicate with any of the companies here who need a software platform, you know, upon which to build solutions and value-added solutions for their customers. So I'd be happy to, I think my contact information is, is with well, you guys. Fact, and uh, better than that, th this is a conference of peers. Fantastic. So if we have someone with a microphone, we would be very happy to take any questions that you've got out there, and particularly those of you who are thinking, how does this affect my business? Are there uh, incremental revenue opportunities for me in my lines of business? And let Michael start that dialogue with you immediately. Sure. So, yep. Questions out there? Just raise your hand, and we'll send somebody over with the microphone to where you're sitting. Can't see. Two questions over here, so. <laughs> So one of the things that uh, Bob Pepper, for example, has talked about from Cisco it has been uh, latency as a key issue. In the environment of Internet of Things, what role do you think latency it would be important? Will it not be important? Because that drives kind of network design. So I wonder if you could comment on that. Yeah. Um, so we've been looking at this from the context, you know, uh, we think about things in terms of business process. And so the question is, what are the kinds for us, the question is, what are the kinds of processes that will happen at the edge and require edge intelligence? And what are the kinds that will happen um, in our central systems? Uh, we have one of the world's leading end memory computing platforms. So end memory is, uh, um, it's, the computing platform is in RAM, so everything's incredibly fast. The enablers of Internet of Things are cheap, sensors and chips and in memory to process all the massive data. That's why a lot of the analysts believe it's time to actually become real. If you think about, we have a partner called SK Solutions that does um, uh, avoidance, collision avoidance. Uh, on a construction site, they may have 30 massive cranes and 20,000 individuals all censored up. And the idea is they want to make sure people don't die and delay um, uh, the project and all the kinds of things that are valuable there. Um, if you look at the edge versus the center, you cannot wait to go back to a central system when two cranes are going to hit each other. Those kinds of decisions have to be made on the edge. So we have to have intelligence on the edge and we have technologies on the edge to make sure we, that people's lives are saved and all those kinds of things. As uh, you look at um, processing the data to find trend analysis and those kinds of things, latency is not so much of an issue. You, you can send it back. So we're fundamentally, I'm not answering your question specifically on how, how latency works, but the way we think of it is um, we believe that a lot of intelligence will move to the edge of the network and more and more will move right to the device. Um, in manufacturing, for instance, on the device you want to know that if you're manufacturing with intolerance, you can't do that today. The data's too big. Um, you have to kind of go offline and test. We think we can work on solutions that can help manufacturers right on the line things like that, smart configuration. So the way we look at it is more on what, from a business process and intelligence standpoint, has to be on the edge because of no latency is required, regardless of how quick we make the network. It'll probably never be quick enough to say, I'm going to risk sending back the information on whether those cranes are going to hit each other. There's another question here. Hi, uh, Lutz Holman with the CIO's office, uh, Republic of Vanuatu. Uh, in the future, if you're right and virtually everything that's being manufactured or has been manufactured is being tracked, individuals are being tracked, vehicles are being tracked, everything's being tracked and is reporting uh, where it is, can you talk about the opportunities for industrial espionage in that world and countering that and for national espionage? Thank you. Yeah, I think this is going to become a central question of 
our lives in the future. I, people talk about you know the, the end of privacy and being able to track everything you do on the internet, but before too long, you'll walk down the street and Bill Joy's vi vision of smart does knowing where you are because it knows your DNA and all. I mean, the world's gonna become very interesting. I think if you look pragmatically over the next five to 10 years, SAP uh, started out as a German company. The Europeans are much further ahead than the Americans in legislation to determine who owns the data. For instance, uh, recently there was a, um, a ruling that the data generated about you in a car, for instance, is yours. That's really interesting. Now, certainly Honda or VW has the data, but the idea is that you'll be able to choose um, how they might use it. And you will probably choose to let them use it. If you have a heart monitor, you probably want the doctor to be able to make sure that it's monitored. In the case of espionage and smart cities, if you look at the cities of the future, there's, they're going up all over the world where they're wiring things together. You can imagine the kind of hacking that took place at the Iranian nuclear facility and more recently some other examples where cities will get turned off effectively. My honest opinion is that is light, we will see a few of those. Uh, but good folks like Cisco and Intel and others are working on encryption at the, at the um, at the device connectors and gateways to inhibit that. It will take some time. I, I, there was a really interesting article about internet security, and yes, we see things like Target, et cetera, but if you look at your automobile today, I, I don't know if you guys all experienced this, but over the last 15 years, almost, almost every car is pretty good. You know, when, when I was a kid, there were clearly the bad cars and the really great cars. But even most cars are getting better and better, and it's because the global understanding of how to make sure cars and wheels don't fall off has gotten better and better because we've seen all the problems again and again and again. The view of this article was that internet security will become very similar. After time, we will see all the problems that will happen. Now, if you take connected devices, that's another level. So we will run through all of the problems and we will see cities go down and things. I, I believe this will probably happen. But we will learn from it and we will, we will figure out how to stop it. And the good folks at, Cent at Cisco and Intel and others are really working on this problem. We've got about two, maybe two and a half minutes left. Is there another question out there? And Michael, we had breakfast this morning. He is really here to meet with you. That's the whole reason he's here in this chair is he decided to come to PTC, never been to this meeting before. No, it's great. And he's here to interact with you. So do make sure that you get his business card. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll be out after if anybody wants to talk. Sure, I'll ask a question. Um, you know, you asked about latency as a potential issue in things like uh, SK Solutions and Dubai and uh, also presumably things like connected vehicles for uh, vehicle collision detection. Um, the, uh, the question that I always want to know from the perspective of service providers is what is it exactly that is the implication on network architecture of the Internet of Things. Um, because, you know, from an IP addressing perspective, V6 takes care of that. Mm -hmm. um, from the perspective of uh, bandwidth, you have some maybe extreme examples like um, GE GenX jet engines that are generating 50 megabits per second that is actually uploaded. They generate more in flight, but as far as what's uploaded for predictive maintenance, it's 50 megabits, but like light bulbs and temperature sensors and smart meters, on the one hand, you know, there's the idea that if a meter is read once a month versus is read every 15 minutes, that's a thousand fold, you know, requirement for bandwidth, but it's a thousand times like eight bytes. So what really is the incredible transformational impact or is it just business as usual for network operators and you know just the usual you know uh, provisioning additional capacity just for growth as usual for things like Netflix as we you know just talked about a few <laughs> minutes ago. videos, yeah. Um, and you've got 45 seconds. Okay. <laughs> I think that's to be seen. I think there are two parts of that. One, compression at the device will get better and smarter, so less bandwidth as you talked about. What do I really need to send? Um, and at the same time, I think there's a, a huge amount of data that we don't track now. Um, at, at gateways, we tend to track off a, a, a programmable logic controller 5% of the data on the machine. So we may just decide we want it all, which will then have real impact. 
So that's a 2B. I think we have to watch it. All the, all the you know, what I read says we're going to hit bandwidth issues. Um, but uh, so I think this becomes, the question is do, how much of the data do we actually pull off the machine and by, is there enough value to keep pulling more? And I think that's something we all have to watch. Terrific. Michael? Thank you, guys. Time's right up. Time's up. Perfect. Couldn't get better than that. <laughs>